Hey traders, a uh, special video to after a 920 Monday. It was a down day. We closed well off the lows, but it was a painful day all around. So it's a good time to go around and see if we can uh, summarize some of the action to see where the opportunities are coming up. So I had like maybe 20 alerts in my inbox and the alerts come to me because I do homework like these orange lines and uh, a lot of them triggered. These are lines for me to start looking to buy the dip. So I'm, I'm going to start with the big guy, Apple. Um, today, so, so I've been bearish on it up here. I don't like it when it runs away because it's not the grower like Facebook or Amazon, yet it gets all the kudos from it because it's a monster of a company. Um, but nevertheless, now it's come back into a zone. So let's establish the fact that this is a viable dip if the markets hold up. And um, if I look left, and I'll tell you why, it's because if I look left, there has been there have been bounces here, and this was the breakout, slightly lower than here. So 139, I remember it shouldn't have broken 140, and it just sliced through it. I forget what the headline was, but this was ridiculous. And here it is now pricing it out. And if I look further left, it was a more ridiculous pop up here. Was that the car thing? I don't know. Anyway, uh, this pop was completely bogus at the time. They took their time, failed once, finally took it out in an equally as ridiculous bust. You can also argue that this was a failure before that in last September. Here we are this September coming back into the zone that failed last September, arguably. Zone. I didn't say line. Zone. Um, so if I were to pick a, a line, 137, 138, somewhere in between there is a definitely where, where my line is 138 so that's my alert a apple was not one of the alerts today that should tell you something if i was more bullish on apple my line would be up here and i had all kinds of companies pop up today so not apple but it is a viable dip in fact if i'm long panicking now is making an assumption that the markets are going south and uh, that's not my assumption right now not yet okay so that's apple all right I already shared an Amazon setup, so I won't waste any time on that one. Let me flip to Facebook, which is the real grower here. Uh, it's falling back into a pivot zone. That's exactly where it bounced before and the time before that and the breakout from the time before that and the failure points of the time before that. Uh, if it fails at uh, 350, 351, sorry, then uh, one little respite at 348, and if that fails, then the 340 zone is the neckline before that. So you can argue that it failed here, consolidated, bounced from here, it could come back to here, and that's where my alert was. Facebook did alert me, kind of like saying, uh-oh, you're losing footing. So if I took a short-term long, this would be my stop-out point tomorrow. Why? Because if it bounces, like Amazon, if it bounces, it's going to find sellers into 370. That's a fact. Let me put the lines. And uh, what you don't want is for it to draw the right hand uh, shoulder so there's going to be sellers here lurking and I say this because from the price action I'm not like I'm not in people's minds I don't have inside information just from the charts by the way uh, so and if this is lost then um, you know it's going to trigger the small inverse head I mean head and shoulders um, I will just represent it with the line lower but if you want me to draw it out I can uh, this was answering somebody else on square okay so uh, shoulder head and then wherever this ends up being if it pops and then fails come back takes out today's low um, it will go here as big as this tall thing here so I don't give it full credit immediately because of the levels of support that I mentioned so that's Facebook those are two major players uh, Microsoft, slightly different uh, levels wise, but same concept. Look, wall. I mean, like you could draw a straight line and then the base, and now they're back to that base. I would, this would be the last one of the three that we mentioned that I would catch. It seems like it still has more to lose, but it's the strongest one. Same exact comment on Google. They are the strongest ones, but what if this is slightly um, more downside from here for the whole market? These have more froth to shed versus Amazon that's already shed so much from the highs. You see my relative term? Okay. Netflix also alerted me, but just because, hey, start looking, it's falling into a neckline area. 
This also would not be the first one I would go after, even though it was super strong. But the super strong was down from here, and there's plenty of room to get back to here and still be okay. So this is not the knife I would catch. Although it would be fantastic, it's been strong. And XVI popped up. And it's because kind of like, uh, what was it, Facebook? Falling into an exact base for a huge rally. Here it is. This is my second chance. If I said here, oh shoot, I wish I was long in XBI, here's my chance. So again, it's gonna that support is now resistance. So because we lost it, and it whoops, not that one. Uh, this one. Now we you know you've heard the term prior support becomes forward resistance. So now the whole zone is resistance. In fact, I should say resistance zone um not a hard line in the sand so the bounce will find sellers whoever was stuck up here will say oh thank the lord i'm up and if they come back and trigger this now i'm going to reset the alert saying uh the alert would say uh oh careful um careful head and shoulders potential lose that you come down to here and you buy the dip that's what happens so this is a buy the dip opportunity where it's at with a tight stop. I would stop out if you lose this one and I would try again down here. Same exact against these two and if those fail that means the markets are you know out of whack. So that's the risk. Buy the dip opportunity. Um, in fact I'm gonna do it this way. Buy the dip up but if lost new leg lower. How about this one? And then you can buy the dip here. Whoops. This way. Oh my god. Come on, trading view. Stop moving things around. Okay. That's an XBI. Also viable, but with a tight stop. One of two. Not all in for sure. Okay, you've heard me say this before. The small caps, they are in a buy the dip zone. Uh, if it's lost, this is a long consolidation period, then the whole market is in trouble, my per personal opinion. Um, so tight stop. I would make even today's low as a stop one and uh, those candles as a stop two. So that's another buy to dip opportunity. Provided I have um, the discipline to stop myself out. Then we have a whole bunch of um, tiny companies like Robolex for example falling into prior support. Same concept. This particular company, I like it for the long term. Um, look at the support zone it has. It's a very wide zone. So my alert is not until here, but it did trigger one alert off of this one. It was more of a cautionary alert. Hey, you're losing a prior support level. So tomorrow, I wouldn't get long unless they can get above it and at least show me that they're going to probably close above um, the top. So it fell 4% today. Um, if it falls another 4% tomorrow, then it is a buy to dip against these candles. So that would basically trigger my second short. So my, I'm, in fact, I'm going to move mine up. And I'll say this is two of two. Um, buy the dip two of two. Because one of two already triggered today. I just told you that. So BlackRock doesn't usually pop up on my screen. But there it is. I mean, it doesn't get cleaner than this. You can look left on the chart. Boing, boing. Uh, expanding range so that makes it somewhat vulnerable uh, but it shows strength so every effort they go back to base but they're making more headway so now if they bounce and they don't make anywhere near as much headway then I'll be aware and that's that'll be a short opportunity if it loses this one then I would short it because that would be a clear head and shoulders down to here and that would be my buy to dip opportunity so today it triggered my buy to dip because it's probably uh, let me see triggered if I do it it's right there you see it so if I can want to be honest with myself I'll do it this way so now the I reset the same trigger and if the bounce and I will change the message to say uh oh head and shoulders okay so if that's the case then the downside opportunity is clear there's no head and shoulders yet I'm speculating that it does come and if it does and it loses footing then this is your target and look left that would be a strong buy to dip opportunity much stronger than this one this one is speculating um, so what you want to avoid is avoid this this is what the, the head and shoulders would look like and then they would price in this how big of a move 
usually as tall as the middle part. So the middle part is from here, 840 to uh, 960 so $120 lower from here. I don't usually go that far immediately. I give it credit to where I think buyers will step in. So technically, it's um, it's $160 from here, or whatever the math is, from here to here, so somewhere down here, which would be great. I mean, not so great for people who are long, but from a solid s support level, like I have here probably to get long with emphatic exclamation point two. So, in fact, um, I wish I can copy paste it here would also be a great place to buy it. Get long, not just buy it. Okay, so I bet you I can say the same thing about most other banks. Um, My Microsoft. Morgan Stanley is into a consolidation zone. Now, I was short, very short, as until Friday. I closed my short on Friday. Clearly mistimed, but I still had some leftover credit call spreads, so those were bearish as well. But now those are played out completely, and they expired this Friday at 107. So I had shorted the pop, and I said I'm shorting you right here, 107, 108. So I'm not adding to my short down here. If anything, maybe I I would be convinced to go long. However, whatever Powell says, these guys will move. Um, if the TLT pops, uh, these guys are going to fall because that means yields are falling so for some reason machines sell banks when yields are falling so banks are the worst thing to be long into this Fed event um, if or, 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 or actually I should rephrase that let me think about it this way if I'm long banks and the yields pop because the Fed says something bearish then banks may catch a fake bid fake meaning they're popping on an automatic knee-jerk reaction to machines buying them with yields whereas markets are falling so they might be a good long but I I would prefer to use the TLT for that bet but anyway there you go I convinced I'm, I mean I confused the heck out of you it's so clear in my head <laughs> target is the other one it's more of an alert careful it's losing footing uh, inverse head and sh inverse cup and handle may be in play um, so it could come to here I'm not calling for it but it is playing with fire. That was the call on target. Not a knife I'd like to catch, although super strong stock. I had other alerts like Array, for example, Array, um, dipping into a prior support level. So this is a buy the dip, buy the rip type of a trade. So I would either buy the rip, which hasn't worked and it's bringing me losses. Um, and now it's a buy the dip opportunity to swing back up here. So the, the, the bet here would be that this support that was resistance that had been taken out recently, middle of August, uh, will hold. So that's the assumption. That's the buy the dip. So it did dip into that quote support. If it does indeed hold, if markets stabilize, then the opportunity is to get long here to try to swing it back up here. If I'm long already, I wouldn't add. I didn't add. I'm wrong. I'm long and wrong in it. But it was a small bet as it's closed. It had profits immediately. I didn't take them. Uh, hindsight, I probably should have. But it was a small bet, and I didn't worry about it much. I had a whole bunch of these. So the same concept. If now it looks a little bit better, I wouldn't add to anything unless I learn something new. That's it. All right, Triple D, that's a 3D printing company. Um, technically, it's falling into a prior support. Not my favorite stock. I love the concept. I know I will have one at home at some point. Everybody will. Um, it's just taking its, uh, its time to get there. I think there are a lot of manufacturers that are holding this stuff up because imagine how much money they would lose out on buying parts if you can just uh, own the schematics and swap them with friends and just buy the material and print your own parts. I mean, a whole bunch of people will be out of business, right? So I think it's more of that than the actual technology. It's available. They're just holding it back. That's my 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 thought. Just like self-driving, technology is here, but legally you can't make it happen. It'll be a nightmare. So um, very ginger bounce. I would stop out if it loses this level because I think I'll have the opportunity to do the same exact thing at 2345. I'll put the alert right now. The second one is Nucor. So um, overnight, on top of all the junk, uh, China issued some sort of a, I don't know what they mean by curbing. Um, anyway, so they're messing around with supply and demand. 
on uh, steel for example iron ore uh, so that affects steel so all steel companies like this one have fallen apart let me see x okay so same deal there right so um uh, it's falling back into support but at the risk of more headlines so headlines aside this is a buyable dip in the zone so it's not all in and I'm counting on this consolidation period which is about a month and a uh, capitulation moment in it two days of whoosh within that consolidation period so in theory usually normal circumstances this is definitely a buyable dip um, caveat I'm gonna scroll into go into X to tell you the overall risk so last year you may remember I I've shared it with a lot of people depends on whether you saw it or not read it I was long X at nine dollars and I got in trouble because it went to four point seven or whatever the low was under five dollars last year just for perspective okay so it falling into twenty dollars seems a little funny right catching the falling knife that is you know four times higher than last year's low so be aware of the overall look of the chart this is a hard bounce area that's a solid short-term support with confirmation back in time and confirmation even further back in time but if I take out all the lines and I go to a weekly chart just to sh show you perspective so this fall from here to here was horrendous and that started before COVID right and this is about half where it went to stalling here is normal and giving back half this rally is also normal so if it falls to 20 or 18 would make a better visual place to get long and that would get us still above COVID start so um, yeah so COVID start was here there's no need for steel to be up here based on out of COVID trade it just doesn't make sense so keep perspective technically these are pivotal zones therefore there will be buyers there they may have forgotten about the old days I don't know but I'm just giving you all angles MasterCard so I also read some sort of a negative headline I can't remember but it sounded devastating so I expected my MasterCard to be down like a bunch today but it wasn't uh, something about India I can't remember something that sounded like India shuts the door against my um, MasterCard maybe the headline was poorly written I didn't drill down because I didn't pay attention to it I don't read headlines I, I see the headlines I don't drill down into the article unless I see some credibility to the writer so in this case it's falling into very solid support zone starting with this bottom right here so it did trigger one alert for me to start look looking and another one lurks below it so it's in between a place where if I'm not long my uh, MasterCard or Square or Visa this is a viable buy the dip opportunity um, I don't know if the other ones look the same yeah about the same I know Square somebody asked me about it and Square is the most expensive of them has the most to lose strongest stock so potato potato what you prefer PayPal looks decent it is just like MasterCard so I think MasterCard looks pretty darn attractive it has been the laggard so maybe it has a, the few the less to fall in bad terms by time so keep in mind that opportunity there and then I had a whole bunch of little companies like Ensego not to insult Ensego um, at lows like you wouldn't believe right but sometimes in the last two weeks Jim Cramer I heard uh, capitulated on it and said it should be 45 percent lower so I'm going to assume he said it here so it's already given back 12 percent of that 45 percent but he buys everything and the stupid way of looking at it if the guy that buys everything gave up on it sold it so to speak we might be running out of potential sellers so by default the next action should be more of a buying process than selling so if the last person to sell it sold it it's ridiculous to think about it that way but it is you know it is a very iffy stock it is somewhat 5g I don't know the details on how 5g they are but where the heck is that money coming from uh, it's not as exciting PL, although now it's showing some life so take it with a grain of salt it's a seven dollar stock I would even at this price I would just buy shares 
and or by uh, leaps 750 um, seven dollars and fifty cent calls or ten dollar calls out in time I would uh, you know allocate X dollars as a risk this one before I did I shared a while back a credit put spread that got in trouble and then bailed itself out especially for somebody that kept cool calm collected maybe I would repeat the same process like instead of selling a naked put I would sell an aggressive credit put spread in the intention of taking the put taking the assignment and selling my protective put for more potential profits to lower my entry point so many ways you can slice it um, this one is one and then the other puzzle stocks like wish super fast runners uh, the PL super fast growing it's a US company uh, so I'm not sure why it's set an all-time low today I'm still long I stayed long I have booked some profits the current calls I have are red I'm sitting on them I didn't add because I don't know much new today uh, newer than Friday so until I get clarity on the whole market this one has the opportunity to really balloon out of nowhere so if you look at it intraday it's really a crazy mover so anything can happen it might be a reddit stock that's not the reason I took it um, just you know caveat that it is a wild card and when I don't know why a stock is making a new all-time low maybe somebody knows something I don't so I should pay attention to that and respect it so the next chart or two are going to just say the obvious we had a pop last week in a lot of stocks now they're giving back that pop they're going back to base not a reason to panic that's normal price action PLTR is exactly the picture perfect of that it broke out somebody said do I get long I said you know it has history with 20 I 28 to 30 uh, I would see what happens when it, this it gets to a prior failing point so it wouldn't be an ideal starting position even though technically this breakout gets you higher but one can argue that the breakout really started here and this is about the same tar about the target of that breakout down below so I didn't rush into it long on Friday going into even on Thursday um, it was an in and out position for somebody actively trading or somebody in it for the long term so if somebody's in it for the long term and they had one bad day that's not a reason to bail out because they just revisited the neckline and this if you see that in any chart that's the uh, uh, the takeaway it's just looking back at footing to see if it's really footing why not do an EV company so uh, or two so Neo fresh loss of level this is danger zone people because that means that it just triggered another new bearish pattern hopefully the bearish pattern is unfolding from up here and this is about the target of it if not this one will break through 27 um, eyeball with a lot of support and I mean a lot of support where it's at because if I look left this was the base for a big rally and if you remember this drop was very scary this drop was March the March drop for the Nasdaq was incredibly scary very violent the most violent I've seen probably ever top five for sure violently reacted upwards from it and then they came back and tested it several times several times violently and here they are dropping into it slowly in relation relative to this this is like slow-mo today they took a ledge lower this is not a place I leave the stock personal preference but I am aware that this must hold if I'm looking to get long the stock this is not a place I pi pile in all in I I nibble how do I nibble I buy shares and I sell immediately calls against them covered calls or I buy uh, leaps um, calls naked I would make it a small position debit call spread I would make it maximum half position why because a debit call spread is somewhat hedged I buy something I sell something on a bad day it's not so painful but buy a call on the VIX up day so the here's another note I should have started with I guess even if a stock is down this much and I buy six percent today Neo if I buy a call today and tomorrow it pops and the whole market pops the VIX gets crushed a lot of my profits will be eaten away by the fact that the VIX got crushed everything gets priced lower calls puts everything so part of the up move in calls will disappear part of the profits will disappear let me show you this is the visual of it in Tesla because this argument came up 
uh, in the chat room so somebody said they were going to buy calls maybe even they said they're buying calls for this week they paid four dollars for it so they must have bought them really up there so i said re the same thing i just said so the vix is up 20 percent today 24 percent at the time it was up 30 percent this shows the difference between normal pricing on the calls for this week and today's pricing on the calls this week they're about 40 percent more expensive than quote normal the further out in time the more normalized they are and out here nobody cares about the vix today right so if i buy a call out here i'm not overpaying i'm paying the going rate if i bought a call today naked meaning one call one single leg call two three one whatever i overpaid so tomorrow morning if tesla pops five percent and the vix gets crushed twenty percent a lot of this five percent pop will disappear because this goes and everything calls and puts will go down okay so that effect the implied volatility crush that's what we're looking at implied volatility think about it how nervous is the market about this put or this call the stock <laughs> options so that's the effect that I have to take into consideration that's why it's better to buy a call spread because if I buy a call I am uh, strictly spending money at an expensive rate I just said that it doesn't matter which one but if I buy one and I sell one to do a debit call spread that's a debit call spread it doesn't matter how wide it is I'm buying one I'm overpaying I'm selling one I'm over collecting because somebody else is overpaying so this neutralizes itself this thing neutralizes itself so that's the only reason why I don't strictly buy naked calls or naked puts on a big VIX move days because you might have this blow down whatever uh, bleed is probably a better explanation okay so 26 minutes I think I'm gonna stop here I have many more tickers uh, same concept if I missed one that you really want to hear about then message me I may do a special video on that